Hey, this is BJ. Thanks for listening to our show's podcast. If you're a fan of all things geeky, you should check out my other podcast, BJ Shea's Geek Nation. We have new episodes every day, and you can check it out at BJGeekNation.com. Your home is going into foreclosure, and you feel like a financial wreck. You don't know where to turn for accurate information. I'm bankruptcy attorney Travis Gagné. Let's talk about some legal options. If we work quickly, we can propose a plan to save your home, modify the loan, or in many cases, even eliminate your second mortgage. The consultation is free. I've helped hundreds of people just like you make informed decisions about whether to save their home or exit it on a reasonable, organized timeline. The chapter you choose sets the tone for the next chapter of your life. Please contact me today at ChooseTheRightChapter.com. That's ChooseTheRightChapter.com. KISW, The Rock of Seattle. Pain in the Grass is back. Tuesday, July 30th, Friday, August 2nd, Saturday, August 3rd. It's happening at White River Amphitheater. You got Slipknot. You got Disturbed. You got Rob Zombie. You got Marilyn Manson. You got Volby. This is why we need three big days, plus so many other great bands that are going to be on this bill. Lots of great local bands, too. You can check it all out. Check out Woodshed. Very excited to see those boys rock. Yeah. Pain in the Grass. Pound. Yeah, good stuff, man. Yeah. Out. You want tickets? Okay, you got them. Go to LiveNation.com. Two bucks from each ticket sold, benefiting the Vitology Foundation. They support a lot of great local charities. And again, all the information about Pain in the Grass. Line up everything. Just go to KISW.com. Let's play B-Mix. It's time to play the game. Yeah. So Pump it up for Monday. Yeah. Pump it up. Pump it. Pump, 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 pump it up. Wow, Steve, you actually seem kind of pumped up today. Feel pretty good. I, yeah. To be perfectly honest, I thought you uh, would need some pumping up after the fact that you did all of that athleticism this weekend. <laughs> athleticism, that's right. <laughs> I feel like if I sit down, Rev, I will not be able to stand back up. Well, let's get to the game and see if uh, Steve's brain needs to be pumped up. We got Jeff and Polsbo to take him on. Jeff, are you there, sir? I am here. Excellent. What's he playing for today, Steve? Up for grabs, tickets to see The Bash, which is featuring Rancid over at America's Car Museum on June 9th. Go to KISW.com for all the details. Other bands featured at The Bash, Rancid, like I mentioned, Pennywise, Suicidal Tendencies, L7, a bunch of others. Get your tickets right now at TheBashTacoma.com. All right, Steve, get out of here. For those playing at home, Jeff will have 60 seconds to answer 10 questions. Jeff, you can pass all you want, but you will only get three guesses per question. Are you ready? I'm ready. Whose tombstone bears the inscription, quoth the raven, nevermore? Oh, uh, Edgar Allan Poe. Yes. At what sport, uh, at what sport is Kareem Abdul-Jabbar a Hall of Famer? Uh, basketball. Yes. The term potable means that the water is safe to what? Drink. Yes. What foreigner song does the singer have a temperature of 103? Uh, pass. How many movies are in the Police Academy franchise? Uh, three, four, five. No, no, no. How many oh. years are in a semi-centennial? Uh, five? No. Ten? No. Uh, two. No! Oh. Foods that satisfy the requirements of Jewish law are known as what? Kosher. Yes. Which state's two-letter postal abbreviation is MD? Uh, Maryland, or Massachusetts. You were right with Maryland. The characters okay. Ned and Sansa have what surname in Game of Thrones? Uh, Stark. Yes. What represents a full count in baseball? Uh, sorry, say one more time. What represents a full count in baseball? A full count? Uh, pfft. Pass, I don't know. Oh, one, oh. two, three, four, five, six, correct. Oh, Jeff doesn't like okay. the Mariners. He doesn't watch the Mariners. <laughs> well, I mean... Uh, doesn't know about the Mariners. Yeah, or uh, that in general. We'll have to see if uh, Steve yeah. can get to that question. If he does, yeah. I feel that he will get that correct. If you were a Mariners fan last season, you saw that happen a lot. <laughs> Felix was uh, on the mound. Oh, really? Yeah. Not very good there. Hmm? Yeah, he said he had a tough year. Well, we'll have to see if Steve has a tough game. Are you ready, Steve? Oh, yeah! 
whose tomb whose tombstone bears the inscription, "Quoth the Raven, nevermore." Oh, uh, Edgar Allan Poe. Yes. Oh. At what sport is Kareem Abdul-Jabbar a Hall Basketball. of Famer? Yeah. Great cameo in uh, Big Bang Theory. Oh, really? Yeah. Nice. The term potable That's means fun. that wa- the water is safe to what? Swimming. No. What was the question? The term potable. Oh, means- drinkable. Yes. What- safe to drink. What foreigner song does the singer have a temperature of 103? Hot blooded. Yes. Check it and see. <laughs> how-, how many movies are in the Police Academy franchise? Eight. Yes. How many years are in a semi centennial? 25. No. 50. Yes. Foods that satisfy the requirements of Jewish law are known as what? Kosher. Yes. What state's two-letter postal abbreviation is MD? Oh, shout out to D. Ted Smith, Maryland. Yes. The characters Ned and Sansa have what surname in Game of Thrones? Flanders. No. Oh, no, that's right. <laughs> Uh, the Flanders Crest. Syrian? No. Swarskoff? No. Swarskoff. What represents a full count in baseball? Three balls, two strikes. Yes, and Steve, you win. Six to nine. Oh, look at that. Sorry, Jeff. <laughs> and this one's for uh, our, all right, guys, take it easy. my buddy Shan. Uh, she says she always is bummed when this one doesn't get played when I win. Nice. That's right. Love, Tina. Can't argue with Tina. No, can't go wrong with this song. Nah. Especially because it means I won. <laughs> yeah, right? It's actually uh, one of the more tolerable victory songs that Steve has. I, I don't mind hearing this. Oh, I like that one. Uh, the one that you did miss, uh, I love when you don't know Game of Thrones because you just sort of kind of mumble the yeah. answers. Well, I know. Okay, I, I don't know them, but I, I, in my head, I can almost hear the name, but I just can't get it out. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah, this one here, though, is a pretty easy name to remember. Yeah, like Dumbledore? Or no, it's not. <laughs> Daenerys? <laughs> no. Da- Daenerys da- 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 is a person. person. Yes. Daenerys. Yeah, she's part of the Targaryen family, but that's not the family we're looking for. Yeah, so Jeff did get this one correct. It's the Stark family. So oh, Ned geez. Stark, Sansa yeah. Stark, Arya Stark. Spoiler alert, uh, their father didn't last too long. Nope, nope, yeah. nope. If you get through the first season, well, then you'll realize. Spoiler that. alert, their brother didn't last too long. Jeez, no. man. I haven't watched it yet. <laughs> Spoiler alert, their mother didn't last too long. <laughs> Spoiler alert, everybody dies on that show, huh? Yeah, basically, yeah. If you love a character, it will die. Spoiler alert, don't go to any weddings. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, Steve. Oh. Somebody uh, uh, was just texting, is this true, Rev? HQ Trivia, Rev's new question source. Oh, hell yeah. Oh, look yeah. at this. You've it, been found out. Well, of course. Busted. Well, you can just try them out and play the games. Yeah, the first couple of questions for HQ Trivia, which is the little app game that they do like live video and stuff, they do 12 questions and they get increasingly difficult as they're going along. So like the first maybe like one to three I can use because it's about the level of Steve. Anything else is like near impossible. Like I could, I could not do these questions because they would. No one would get any answers. Steve I, level. So you're like, what's a fifty dollar prize? I can't get offended because he's right. Yeah. I mean, it's like I got to uh, make it even for everyone on the game here. He's like, yeah, question one or two of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Yep, yeah. yeah. And that's where I use a lot of the, yeah. the Who Wants a Millionaire uh, wants to be a millionaire questions. On the one hundred dollar questions in Jeopardy. Yeah. Yep. Or Teen Jeopardy. I could probably go up all the way to six hundred. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. If, yeah, all right, sometimes it's debatable. You're right. You're right, Vicky. Yeah, you can't go there. It really long. depends. The pop culture trivial pursuit, that's about all I'm good at. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so anything usually that has to do with reading, as long as it's not a wrestler or a musician, I can do books with that as well. Yeah. That's, that's just fantastic. <laughs> and Game of Thrones references. Yep. Yeah, I got Edgar Allan Poe this time. I know. Congratulations. I was... Kind of surprised, uh, but cur- <laughs> kind of a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> well, wow. congratulations, you did get nine correct today. Caller number nine two zero six four two one rock. There's a 23 year old model. Her name is uh, Mabuba Madmazada, and she is from the great states. I know. I I think I said it right. You nailed it. Ma- Mabuba Madmazada. Yes, Ma- Mabuba. Yeah, Mabuba. Well, my lovely Mabubas. Well, as a ch- you know what? It's funny that that her name is Mabuba because uh, she recently sold her virginity on an escort website, and she got uh, over two million dollars. What for her virginity? She's from uh, the great country of Azerbaijan. Uh, Azerbaijan, and it's a nice place. Yeah, it is. And um, a Japanese businessman said, "Yeah, I'll pay uh, over two million dollars for your virginity." And she, so they asked her, like, what are you doing? Why are you selling your virginity? And she said, I want to make my mom proud. Yeah, I'm looking at Mabuba. <laughs> Let me see Mabuba. Woba. Damn. Yeah, no, she's very attractive. Wow, ba. Okay, Mabuba. And here's what she said. She said, quote, um. Do my do, huh? <laughs> oh, yeah, huh? She's really, I mean, she's attractive. 
I love her hair too. Actually, she's got that wild, crazy, curly hair. It's pretty awesome. Does she have like a weird tattoo that says her mom's name and it equals a heart sign? Oh, uh, and she put it like uh, like on the fleshy part near her pinky. Yeah, you know, on her wrist. You know, the wrist pinky, but that the side of your hand. Mom, dad plus mom equals love. Oh. oh, it's hard to argue with that. I mean, that tattoo's also, not going to last uh, long. And then I think on our other hand it says Japanese businessman plus Mabuba equals money. <laughs> I think Two it's mills. Mabuba, by the way. Yeah. Oh, my bad. Uh, oh, it's Mabuba. Yeah. Oh, you sure it's not Babuba? I wish. <laughs> oh, too bad. 2.6 million. Yeah. Is that, I mean, I, I don't understand that whole appeal thing because... Yeah, what is it? Oh, yeah, yeah, I just spent two point six million. And I had I hooked up with a hot chick that's a virgin. Mm. Well, you get, again, if you've got the money, well, yeah, uh, you know, you and you're an old person, that. it's sort of a, you know, buying virginity in some cultures, dude, and saying you are the first one to do, go there it means something to a lot of folks. Virginity doesn't mean much to us, does it? As 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 this country, but to other places, man, virginity is still a big deal. I mean, I guess it's like some kind of a status thing in this guy's mind. Like, I got this girl, and she was a virgin. You know, from a power standpoint, I've got so much money, I can basically do whoever I want to do. And here comes uh, Mabuba saying, yeah, go ahead. And so is her mom proud? That, I wish they, again, you said that they don't do good follow-up reporting. That how would be hard great is it, to right, talk to mom. Ask that question. And how about dad? I don't know if dad's still alive, but she's got them both tattooed. Oh, I'm sure dad's very proud. The sex deal is going to happen in Germany where prostitution is legal. I don't know how I'd feel, to be honest, because if my daughter came home and said, hey, I can make $2.6 million doing some guy in Japan, I'd Jeez. be like, I, how, could I, how could I tell her to turn that down? I mean, you could be set for life if you took that money and then all of a sudden threw it into account and saved it, and you would never probably have to work. And it seems like it was a bidding war. I mean, not like he just dropped two point six mil- million just on the get go. Like he apparently well, there was a bidding war. Yeah, the second highest bidder was a lawyer from London, and the third highest bidder was a footballer from uh, Munich. I would imagine a soccer player. Yeah, so they're from all over the place. I mean, London. I mean, hello. I don't know why it's such a big deal to a London uh, a Londinian. Wow. So I mean, well, I wonder what they would have spent for her if she was not a virgin. And do we know for sure she's a virgin? Like, how do you prove that? I, well, you can. I think you can prove it by like the first time, right? Is that always the case? No. I, I thought that was just like an old wives' tale. It is because there is a thing that they say. Oh well, if certain things are intact, but that thing can basically be gone by anything, horseback riding or just anything. But if it's That's still, if, but me. if it's still there, is that pretty much the indicator? No. Really? Because there's people who have lost their virginity and still have that intact. Oh, wow. It is not a foolproof way to check to see if someone's a virgin also, or not. Apparently, the winning bidder will have to book a hotel room, and there's also an option of them using a German doctor to verify the girl's virginity. <laughs> so all you can do, like Vicky said, Jeez. is you can prove that it hasn't it, it, that, that condition hasn't been violated, even if it has. It's a possibility that she's had sex and it didn't have it wrecked, right? Yes. Okay. But that's the best you can do in life. You can't really do any better than that because, you know, my buddy Buster, if, you know, if he hasn't shown up, then what do you get? Then that's the only that's the only proof you would have, even if, in fact, maybe, you know, maybe there was a guy that just I don't know who that guy is. It was like not able to, you know, talk to my buddy Buster. All right. Yeah, I think I, I think we yeah. described it, Steve. No, I think we did yeah. a very good job. Did a really good job. DJ and Migs mornings on The Rock 99.9 KISW. Hey, you got something to say? They're wild, rapid, and on the loose. This is Listeners on the Loose. 99.9 KISW, the rock of Seattle. It's Listeners on the Loose. You pick the topic, you guide the show at 206 421 Rock. You can also text us at 77999. Whatever it is you want to talk about, man, it is up for grabs. You get to take control of this fine program, but Steve does have a rule. It's a simple rule, BJ, and that's to show some energy and bring it. Otherwise, we're going to have to go. And yeah. then say goodbye. Goodbye, old friend. Steve already has a gong under his belt today. One I, gong. Yeah, in. yeah, he's the gong and judge. <laughs> Looking for two. Yeah, that's right. 206-421-ROCK. Text us at 77999. Let's go to Day Lynn. Day Lynn, you are on the rock. Day Lynn. Hi, actually, it's Jalen, but that's cool. Oh, hey, Jalen. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> it's okay. That's right, all right, all right. So, you know, I'm um, the one with the hearing know, problem, apparently. It's okay. You know when you guys were talking earlier about, like, hey, doing weird stuff with your parents? Yes. Uh-huh. Okay, so um, I have a story about my sister and my dad and my stepmom. So uh, my sister smoked pot when she was in high school, 
And um, she would, you know, the little light switch where you go in your room and you turn on the light switch. That's where she stored her pot to oh, hide it from her parents. So what did she take? The, step- did she take the plate off and put it behind the plate. Yes. Jeez, how dangerous is that? You got a flammable substance you're putting in a light switch with his wires. Good for her. She's she about was right. a teenager. <laughs> yeah, that's all. She's so. Why is our house on fire? But it smells amazing, dude. <laughs> But anyway, so my stepmother went into her room to go uh, paint her room, and so she took the light switch off, and she found the pot, and she went up to my dad, and she's like, Bill, Bill, what is this? Uh, Look what I found in Mandy's room. What are we going to do with it? And she looks at her and goes, smoke it. (laughs) Perfect. Good old dad. Well, you know the the tree that apple fell from. (laughs) Yep, yep. She's like, oh, that's mold. Let me take that. So yeah, that is awesome. All right. That's a fun. That's a, that's got to be a fun story that probably gets dragged out every holiday. So you know what Mandy had over there? Yeah. What are you doing? You're a kid. You can't be like, hey, what, what happened to my weed that I was hiding from you guys? Yeah. You just have to chalk it up to crap. They found it, but they're not saying anything. I'm yeah. just going to have to accept that it's a loss. And boy, dad's a lot more chill these days. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> that's he keeps awesome. eating everything in the freezer. It's listeners on the loose. You pick the topic. You guide the show. 206-421-ROCK. You can text us at 77999. Uh, earlier we were talking about uh, things that people have missed because we, we, we played that audio of The Price is Right. And they went to the woman that was the next contestant to come on down. And it turns out she was on the crapper. Uh, or at the, in the bathroom, so she missed out for a second. That was really cool because the announcer really, I don't know if we have that audio available. We do. Uh, if Let me, yeah, because it, it, it was awesome how this went down. Sarah Armstrong, come on down. You're the next contestant on The Price is Right. Sarah Armstrong, come on Where are you? Down. She's, she's in the bathroom. <laughs> I love that they kept it. They didn't edit that out for the yeah. show. It's too awesome not to keep. I will tell you this, Steve. It just goes to show, I've been alive on the planet for so long. There is a time, I'm sure, I'm sure this has happened a, a, at least once before on The Price is Right, but you would never embarrass a woman like that to say that she was in the bathroom back when I was a younger mm-hmm. person. So it would definitely have gotten cut years ago. But now, it's funny TV. It's really interesting how our sensibilities have changed over the years. She walked out with a toilet paper on her shoe. Did you oh, guys yeah. hear the, the crowd start chanting your name at the end? Oh, no. Could you imagine? Yeah, everyone started building, Tara, Tara, you're just in the bathroom. Talk about and- shy bladder syndrome. I'd be like, oh, I really can't go. In it, that's a good point. Like, What if the bathroom's super close to where the, 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 the actual studio is, and you hear them calling your name, oh, yeah. but you're like, do I pinch this off, or what do I do in this situation? Yeah, that's a tough do one. You come running out and just accept the fact that Drew's going to look at you like you smell a little funny? Yeah, that's a fact. I think I would. And then if you're not complete on your business, you're like, can we get this going, Drew? Right, let me spin that damn wheel, yeah. Drew. Let me just hurry up here, buddy, or otherwise the price is not going to be right. One dollar, and I'll be right back. Yeah. Damn. Uh, well, we're talking about that because things that people are chiming in about things that they missed while they were actually at the event. Uh, one person says, I missed a goalie fight uh, between Portland and Seattle at a WHL game once. I was getting a beer. Oh, that sucks because it's not often that goalies goalie get fight. into fights. Yeah. yeah, dude, that's rare. Somebody missed an M's game. They missed a bench clearing brawl. My brother and I were just chatting. All of a sudden, there's a giant roar, and I look up, and the players are charging the mound. And that's another rare thing. Like you know, I mean, it happens in baseball, but mm-hmm. how many times are you at a game where a brawl breaks out? I've never seen it. And I've gone to a ton of games. And so I missed Ken Griffey Jr.'s return after he got injured, and when he got a home run in his first hit. Oh, oh man, that yeah. stinks. Yeah. Let's go to Chris in Tacoma. Chris, you are on the rock. Hey, guys. Uh, so I was out on tour with Foreigner as a truck driver, and I'm driving along the highway and just happened to see a truck pull up next to me. The light turns on inside, and there is a woman singing into the mic while yeah. the gentleman is bowling. Wow. How about that? You must have seen a lot of cool stuff if you're on the road all the time in a truck, <laughs> looking down into cars. Yeah. Uh, oh, my goodness, yes. <laughs> I love the summertime, short skirts. Oh. I thought about that. All right. 
There you go. Well, appreciate the call, Chris. Yeah. Where do I apply? Yeah. Hey. I'm just kidding. Yeah. Well, there you go. That's, uh, that, that's so many people having sex in vehicles. Is it the motion, Vicky? What is it? Because, I mean, guys will have sex all the time, but I mean, I, I, a lot of women, I think, do you really want to be like doing it in a moving vehicle like that? Um, moving vehicle, I've never actually done it. I've done it in vehicles many a times, except for, you know, not, I'm not talking full meal deal. I have done that while in a moving vehicle. I did that a lot in my early 20s or late teens because I couldn't do it at my parents' house. Gotcha. Uh, so it was basically anywhere we could find, we would do it. Yeah. Yeah. It was also like you were just kind of like had no nothing to say in the conversation in the car and it got kind of right. songs on the radio weren't working. Yeah. So it's you're just like, like, ah, let me do something. <laughs> oh, wow. Or my phone died. Hey, yeah. take your pants off. Damn, dude. I've never, you know, no one's ever come up and said, I'm bored here. I'll have sex with you. That's never happened to me. I was the first as I saw a lady doing acupuncture to her face on I-5. Oh. What? Yo. Okay. Really? It's impressive. Wow. I don't know how hard is it to, like, just poke your face. Like, you know? <laughs> well, uh, we were just talking to Vicky. <laughs> <laughs> Like do that in the right spot, otherwise you're gonna go paralyzed or some crap. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, that's works. what I've heard. I don't know. I'm not an acupuncturist. <laughs> it's probably good. Yeah, method. I've had acupuncture done to me and and depend and, and yeah, it's gotta be a professional because man, I don't know. I think you could really hurt yourself. I know uh our old buddy Luke Wilson said they used to he went to a guy that put needles all the way to the muscle. Yes. He had the uh, deep acupuncture. Was that Dr. Phil? No, not Dr. Phil. Dr. Phil. Uh, <laughs> oh man, Dr. Bob. Dr. Bob. Dr. Bob. Yeah. So you gotta be, you gotta be. Careful. I was listening to some random podcast one day, and they were they interviewed Doctor Bob. He's apparently a guy. Oh, like, I didn't know he was a guy. Yeah, he's, he's he's a guy that does like some crazy different like you know stuff that involves like hitting different nerves and working with bodies and helping people heal quicker than your traditional methods. Yeah, and it was kind of funny because at first I'm like, this is crazy. This guy's in Washington. He does this like new agey type of hippy dippy type stuff when it comes to healing people. It was interesting, and then I started like thinking. It's just the same guy. And then he mentioned something about working with Seahawk players. There you go. Like, That's Dr. Bob. That's, That's Dr. Bob. guy. BJ and Mix Mornings on The Rock. 99.9 KISW. BJ and Mix Mornings on The Rock. 99.9 KISW. The Rock of Seattle. It's listeners on the loose. You pick the topic. You guide the show, 206-421-ROCK. Text us at 77999. Andrew in Everett, you are on the rock. Morning, guys. How y'all doing? Not too bad, Andrew. How about you, buddy? Not bad, sir. Good to talk to y'all again. What you got for us, man? So you guys were talking about TV shows earlier, and uh, my best friend turned me on to a Canadian TV show that is on Hulu. It's called Letter Kenny. Oh, yeah. I've heard about this. Oh, I don't know about oh, this show. Oh, it's hilarious. It's, it's about... Uh, a guy called Jared Kiso writes it, and he's from a little town up in Canada called Listowell. And the show is called Letter Kane, and they just talk about all like the issues, and it is absolutely hilarious. Anytime we, it. anytime we talk about uh, Trailer Park Boys, we always get a bunch of text messages from people that say you need to check out Letter Kenny. If you love the Trailer Park Boys, you're going to love that show. Oh, all right. Well, there we go. Yeah, well, I am stealing Reb's account. I mean, borrowing Reb's Hulu account, so I, I will be able to do it <laughs> after I get yeah, done with the Runaways. <laughs> The show is absolutely hilarious. The the main guy, he's supposed to be the toughest guy in this town, and oh, it's got to pick it up, got to watch it. It's, it's amazing. Well, yeah, you, you you said the magic words. You said Trailer Park Boys. Yeah. If it's got that vibe, and of course, Trailer Park Boys takes place in Canada as well, so I could dig that. Yeah, you know what? Hulu is almost getting me to come back to the party. Somebody just texted in uh, at 77999. My wife wants me to share my passwords with her. I'm not doing anything wrong, but I think it's weird to just share passwords. What do you guys think? Yeah. Oh, Vicky, I know, I wouldn't you? I don't I, know. Yeah, I had an ex-boyfriend. He's yeah. like, I don't need to know your passwords, but here mine. I'm like, I don't want your passwords. That's very odd. I'm like, I really don't. Like, it's weird. I don't want to look through your stuff. See, yeah, I don't like sharing some of them because they're filthy. Oh. And yeah. there was one time where she needed, she needed my eBay account. Oh. And I was like, crap. I need to change the password quick. Yeah. It wasn't about like... Like she has most like most of the passwords I think she has like she can or she can easily figure them out because she knows how my rhyme and rhythm. Dong sixty nine sixty nine. Yeah. But that was pretty much what like my my email was filthier than that. I oh, mean, I, I, I yeah, I, I would imagine. Yeah, I mean, it had every term that you would use for a female body part. Woo! I think, and 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 it's it, for the password. You are so you are so you right. But I, I never forgot it, and so I had it that way forever. <laughs> 
And then I was like, I got to change it. I can't give this to her in yeah. conscience. Like, this is going to be a really awkward thing. So it took me like five minutes before I even replied to her. I was like, hold on. I got to figure out what it is. Change password. Yeah. Now it's just a normal, boring one. I, you know, if, if somebody's asking for your passwords and you're, it's, you know, you're a relatively young person, I think there's something wrong. I, I recently realized I have so many passwords. If I were, you know, I'm at the age where, you know, I could go tomorrow and then what they, they wouldn't be able to get into any of the accounts. Right. So I. Do you want them to get into the accounts? Well, some things like, you know, like the, the Facebook bank account stuff, email. I mean, <laughs> I like you know, that they, Facebook was the first thing you said. Yeah. Tw- I mean, they should be able to have access to everything so that they can tell everybody, hey, he's dead. Yeah. You know, I feel like well, the that. bank account one, we already share an account, so I don't have to worry about that. Yeah, I've got, it's just, you, it, it's just I have some things I wouldn't think of that all of a sudden, like, oh, man, they probably mm-hmm. want that. Um, Do you so, want, like, did someone to post from your Facebook page? Like, hey, everyone, just want to let you know I'm dead. Yeah. Oh, okay. And then a year later, I'm still dead. Yeah. Yep. Do Happy it. birthday to me, still dead. You can yeah. schedule those posts, right? Yeah. yeah. Sure can. <laughs> yeah, well, and what I've done is I've realized, wow, or what if both Kathy and I go at the same time? That's then mm. the kids don't know our passwords. Right. So I've now got an envelope with every password I have in a sealed envelope, and I've told the kids, here, here it is. Open so Mission it. Impossible. Yeah. It really is. Open That's it up. exciting. Yeah, and then you should be able to get into everything I got. Wait, is it the one in your underwear drawer? Because I already found it. What are you doing in my underwear drawer? Don't worry about Whoa. it. I'm looking for passwords. Wow. Mm. Bank account account. Not sure where that came from. Yeah, it's a little odd. I mean, she is short, so she could have been at the house. I would never know. Maybe it was raining. She needed a hat. <laughs> <laughs> Underpants hat? That's where I keep I them. I don't know. I don't know any other reason. <laughs> I, why have some, I have some really comfy underwear that make I, a very nice hat. I got so the you, have an, you have an envelope with all of your passwords. Because I've always made a ton of different ones over the years. Do you change it? You have to keep it updated, don't you? No, I don't change them. I know they tell you to, but I'm like, you know what? I, yeah. I, I, if someone's going to hack me, they're going to hack me. Oh, okay. then I'll so, change it. So the one, like your your those kind of accounts. But I know like it always sounds like you guys are always changing passwords to things. Oh, like those, it doesn't apps. matter. It's more just the stuff that they don't have access to. Yeah. One person's my wife and I uh, know how to get each other's passwords, but we don't use it regularly. It's a trust issue. You've got to trust people. Otherwise, what are you doing in that relationship? I, I, people are just so needy mm-hmm. that they don't want to be alone, that they're willing to put up with an abusive situation. And sometimes it's mentally or physically or emotionally abusive. If you need passwords from somebody, you need to get out of that relationship. It's, yeah, it's a damned if you do or don't kind of situation. Like if you say, hey, I like my privacy, they're instantly going to think that there's something bad going on. But on the flip side, it's like you should have your right to your own privacy. Yeah. I hate to agree with you, but I do. Yeah. So I got it. <laughs> Whoa. That sounds like the underwear drawer kind of a... As long as we know where your un- envelope is, we're all okay. Yeah, now you know where my envelope is. You're good. Somebody says one of my wife's friends passed away several years ago. Her husband maintains her Facebook account and answers it like she's still alive. Oh, that's oh, weird. Super Come creepy. On. See, That I would, was weird one time when my buddy uh, from my fraternity days, he died. And all of a sudden there was like a message from him in my... Facebook Messenger box, and it was from his wife. Oh, yeah. Like, thanking me for donating money for their kids. Yeah, you know, they had a big GoFundMe. But it was like, when I first saw that message, it was like, huh. And then all I thought was, why didn't you just send me a message from your account? We're friends also on Facebook. You could have sent me one from your account. Yeah, you think that would have been better. She just, probably was just doing stuff on his and forgot that she was still on it. I don't know. It feels like a haunting ghost movie, you know, where, oh, you get a message from someone who's no longer alive. Well, I saw I'm gifting my passwords to my buddy Munson, and I want him to continue my spirit and like just troll people when I'm dead. Does he know what your passwords are? Not yet. But you're going to send them to him, and yeah. you'll think they'll be Munson worthy. Yes, I want yeah. him to be able to handle things for me. Oh, okay. Oh, just, and that, so so that it be like it's it will know you're dead, but he's your official handler. At, at no, no, dead? I just want him to like he he's just going to post on my behalf. Oh, not and like, we're not going to know you're dead. Well, I mean, if you, you'll know I'm dead if I'm dead. Yeah, well, I haven't fully fleshed this out yet. I hope right. I have a couple of years to figure it out. <laughs> yeah, I think you need some time to flesh I just want him to like troll people, like just comment on things. And they're like, wait, Steve's giving us a hard time, but he's dead. Like, well, why? See, uh, here's a problem I have with that because oh, I've, uh, I've been in an awkward situation when people keep Facebook accounts going. You wish them a happy birthday and then people post. Yeah. Dude. Yeah. I, yeah, that's happened. It sucks because, you know, I mean, I see it says here are the birthdays. Facebook says wish people a happy birthday. I'm like, all right, well, they're my friends. I'll do it. But a lot of listeners are my friends, and I don't know their everyday lives. Mm-hmm. So some of them have passed away, and then everybody hates you. And it's like, well, I didn't know he died. No one told me he died. Yeah, you know, and that's he, a tough one. Yeah, but I mean, some people they don't. It's it's a it's a way from the handle the grieving. If the person, I see sometimes like my friends posting on people's 
pages that are no longer alive and just saying how much they still miss them. And I know that they're not doing it for any other reason. Like, I appreciate that. that. Let's see, that would be the perfect situation for like something like with my buddy Munson. If someone does that to my page, he can write back, like, that's cool, man. You still owe me money or something like that. <laughs> you are such a troll. It would be the way you go out. I get it, though. You got to grieve. <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> Thanks for the understanding. <laughs> that is awkward, though. Like, how do you respond when someone's like, it's, they're not alive anymore? Yeah, you got to be. I, I, first of all, don't do it publicly. Message me. Yeah, you know, don't I mean, try and embarrass me. Yeah, I mean, don't don't for, post it like that. But they're probably thinking, how how well does this person know this person? And you, well, that's the thing you don't understand. It's like when you got like I was somebody he liked to listen to, and he wanted to be my friend. I, I don't know what he's doing in life, but you, I <laughs> well, say clearly he's not doing anything in life sadly. anymore. He's not. No, I know. I hate. It. I just hate feeling awkward. It's like stop making me feel awkward. I'm doing the best I can. <laughs> then just wish people a happy birthday that you know are alive. See, a lot of them I don't know they're alive. I, Check their posts. If they posted something that morning, then you're good. Oh, God. Now I got to go do that and wish them a happy birthday? You I'm, don't have I'm to wish sh- anyone a happy birthday. Yeah, you it's don't have most, to. I mean, people see right through that anyway. They know that you're wishing them a happy birthday because Facebook tells you to tell them. Happy I get birthday. people so happy that I do. Okay. They get to like it. They'll even respond back. Or not, you're saying don't do it anymore? Or you could just preface it with, if you're still alive, happy birthday. That's a good one. <laughs> and I mean, it gets it out of the way right there. That's a good point. Not sure if you're alive or anything, but <laughs> we're such good friends. Don't know if you're still ticking. Oh, Facebook has ruined my life. Today's podcast was brought to you by Travis Gagne, bankruptcy attorney. He's here right now and has agreed to answer more of your questions about bankruptcy. How do I know if bankruptcy is going to provide me with relief? What are the steps for my situation? Uh, there's so much information out there about bankruptcy with the internet and uh, what people have heard from friends and, and other people that they've talked to about their financial issues or, or bankruptcy. Uh, there's there's also a lot of bad information out there or, or urban legends about bankruptcy. In order to determine whether bankruptcy makes sense for you, you need to talk to an attorney that's experienced in bankruptcy. So in order to determine whether bankruptcy makes sense for you, you should talk to an experienced bankruptcy attorney and right my job is not to convince you to file bankruptcy my job is to help you to to make that decision and have all the facts uh, so that you can make an informed decision about whether bankruptcy makes sense for you what benefits it's going to have for you and what the downside of filing bankruptcy is thanks travis if you have more questions about bankruptcy you can reach out to travis anytime at choose the right chapter.com